MPC Beats is a free software download, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and connect a turntable to MPC Beats so you can sample from records. Check it out. What's up, my name is Matthew Stratton. On this channel, I'll do set of videos, tutorials, and overviews like this one to help you create and record music. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. So on the standalone versions of the MPC, there are inputs that you can plug your turntable into, but if you're dealing with the software, there are no actual inputs. So if you download the MPC Beats software for free, you might be wondering how you could plug your turntable into the software so you could sample it. So I wanna talk about how you can do that. So you're gonna need a few things to do this. Obviously you're gonna need a turntable. In front of me, I have um, inexpensive Audio-Technica turntable just so I can show you how to do this. And I also have something called an audio interface. This is the Focusrite 2i2. Now to do this, you wanna get an audio interface that has two line level inputs. So this particular audio interface has two line level inputs. This is why I like to recommend you know, a 2i2 opposed to the Focusrite Solo. This way, if you do have a stereo device, you can plug both left and right inputs into your audio interface. So a lot of turntables nowadays do have a built-in preamp and this is gonna enable your turntable to send a line level signal out. So that's key here is you do need a line level signal out to go into your line level inputs. If your particular turntable only has a phono level output, you're gonna need a way to transform that signal into line level. Of course, one way to do this is to use a DJ mixer that has phono level inputs and then send a line level out of your DJ mixer. Another way to do this would be to actually buy a preamp for your turntable. You need to make sure that whatever you get to do this is able to take a phono level signal and change it to a line level signal. If you look at my turntable here in front of me, it is an Audio-Technica turntable and it does have that switch for line level out. I have another Audio-Technica turntable over here that has a built-in preamp as well, but I do have that going into my DJ mixer and I have my DJ mixer coming out. But I've been using this um, Audio-Technica for a little while now and it's doing pretty well. All right, so let's go on to the next step. You have your turntable. Yeah, you your turntable set onto line. So that's the first step is make sure that your turntable has the ability to go to line level. Now, if you look on this particular turntable, I only have these cables coming out of it. And if you look at these cables, these are RCA cables. And these particular cables are not gonna fit into my audio interface. So what I have to do is actually take this particular adapter right here. I'll leave a link for these in the description so you can find the exact ones. And what it actually does is it changes my RCA connection to a quarter inch connection. And this way I'm able to plug this directly into my audio interface, okay? And if you look right here, this adapter is white, so that's gonna mean left. And then right here, this one is red, and that's gonna mean right. And it actually says L and R on there. Now right here, I'm gonna plug this left cable into the input number one on my Focusrite Scarlet. I'm gonna plug the red one into input two on my Focusrite Scarlet. And after we plug in our inputs into our audio interface, we need to actually set the levels inside the MPC Beat software. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Now, if you look at the MPC Beat software, I just opened it up and it says my audio device setup changed. So basically you do need to make sure that you do select your audio interface correctly inside the MPC Beat. So go ahead and install your audio interface and then go to your preferences of MPC Beats. You can see I'm using the L12 driver here. I'm gonna change that to this driver. So right here it says Focusrite USB ASIO driver. So I'm gonna select that particular one. I'm going to push test. So I can hear that that is actually working. Now when you're recording your turntable, you know, your audio buffer size doesn't really matter too much. Um, so I'm just gonna press okay. And at this point, I'm just gonna load an empty project. What I'm gonna do at this point is go up here. You can see, and there's a little arrow right there. I'm gonna click that arrow, and then I'm gonna click sampler. This is where we can actually sample. So MPC Beats is a free software that we can actually sample into, and I wanna show you kinda of how to set your levels so you can do this. All right, so here is the sampler inside of MPC Beats. You can see we can select our input right here, so I have it set onto input one and two. And if you remember, I plugged the inputs of my turntable into input one and two. So one is gonna be the left channel, two is gonna be the right channel. Now down here we got our output, so it could either be stereo or mono. Since I am recording a stereo signal, I'm gonna keep it on stereo, but you could make it a mono 
signal right here if you wanted to. Underneath that, we do need to turn monitor on if we do want to set our levels and be able to hear what we're sampling. If you keep monitor off, we're not going to be able to hear what we're doing. At this point, we can go ahead and set our levels. So if you look at the front of the Focusrite 2i2, there are gain knobs and you're going to need to turn both of these gain knobs up depending on the actual signal. So you need to actually look at your meter under where it says monitor in, in the software. Um, I'm going to lift my needle. I'm just going to drop it randomly. Okay, this is automatic turntable, so I just put it on there. Um, you can see we're getting a signal, but that signal is super low. So I need to actually turn the gain knob on the focus right up. And you can see I'm turning the input one up and only one side is coming up. So I need to turn the input on the left one up as well. I mean, a safe zone is probably around minus nine. This, uh, now in this particular interface, if you push the levels too hot, it's going to distort because it's going to start clipping. That's going to be pretty much with most interfaces. So you want to make sure that when you're setting your levels, these green lines don't jump way past zero. All right, so about minus nine is probably gonna be okay. I mean, it's not like an exact science because you can always boost a signal later if you want to. You can normalize it. You can boost the gain. You can do different things inside a sample edit after you record the sample. But what you wanna make sure that you don't do is go you know, way past zero or way too low where the signal's not strong enough to boost. Because if you record it too low, you might get some background noise. And when you go to boost the audio, you're going to get a lot of noise in your recorded sample. So let's just do a test recording. I'm going to push arm and how I have it set right now, you can see it starts recording right away. But I'm just going to drop that needle on there and then it's going to start recording that. And when I'm done, I can push stop here. Okay. And then, you know, I'm going to lift the needle right there. And you can see we can do a few things, but if you press edit, it's going to take you over to sample edit and then you can edit your sample right there and you can see that it actually did work okay so i'm just moving this start flag over so you can actually hear Boom. right there everything worked out perfectly we are set up to sample from our turntable i'm going to do a few more videos about working with samples within npc beat so if you're curious about that i will put them in a playlist right here so click or tap the screen in that area it will take you over to that playlist. Thanks for watching. My name is Matthew. Continue to create music and we'll talk soon. Peace out.